Hello and welcome to Old Ways Gardening and Prepping. My name is Teresa. I'd like to welcome you out to the shed of many names on this very cold night. We're now down to 26. Man, yeah, it's cold. Got the shed warmed up. So let's talk a little bit about making another tincture. I've been looking forward to getting to make them. Now, the product is dry. And it's a beautiful bag of 100% organic rose hips. Now, these are dry. You can make rose hip tincture with fresh rose hips, which I have done before, or dried. Either or they will work. There's a few plants that you can do this with. Not many. Because I usually do not use dry plant material. Except for certain occasions. And this is one of them. Now of course I bought these at Mountain Rose Herbs. I do have an affiliate link below in my description box. Now, if you use that link, if you can't get a hold of rose hips around you, you can use that link to order some. It will be no cost to you, and I will make a small um, commission off of it. No charge to you. All right, let's talk about these wonderful, beautiful rose hips. Now, these are, of course, certified organic. They have been... Uh, Chopped fairly well. I don't know if you can see it. So. It's going to be. Interesting. Because they're chopped pretty well. So I'm not going to have to use. As much of this. As I would fresh. Fresh is usually. I gently cut the rose hips in half. Take the seeds out. And use the outer part. Of the rose hip. Now, let's talk a little bit about rose hips. Not everybody knows what a rose hip is. Now, this is uh, a dog nose or wild rose hip. Can also be a rosa rugosa, which is the ones that I grow is the rosa rugosas. They are grown specifically not for the flowers because they're little and they're small, but they're pretty. They're grown for the rose hips. All right, what happens is you will see your rose grow and it will get a flower bud on it. The rose will open and bloom. And once it's done blooming and a pollinator comes by, the blooms will fall off and a rose hip will start growing where that flower was. Now, rows of ergosas that I grow cover themselves with flowers because they are heavy rose hip makers. Now, the rose hip is the fruit of the rose. Now, a lot of people grow, you know, those hybrid teas and all that. You know why you rarely ever see hips on them? People cut the flowers off. Granted, yes, that's usually what they're grown for, but you'll never see rose hips on there unless you look at my roses and what I do with the, the other roses. I gather the flower petals off of them, and then that way the rose hip can form. Now, with that being said, these have dried. You can... Um, what you need to do is wait till your rose hips are ripe. They will turn a beautiful red, sometimes a darker purple, sometimes it can be a little brown. You can let them dry on the plant, or once they turn ripe, you can harvest, take a pair of scissors and clip right under the bud where the rose hip and the stem meet. You can clip right there. And dry your rose hips yourself. Either or. 
you can use them dry or you can use them fresh. These, like I said, are dry. So, now, before we start making a tincture, make sure your counter, your workspace is sanitized and clean. Your jar is sanitized and clean. Your funnel, or I'm using a canning funnel. I have a lid and a band. And since these are completely dry, we will be using 80 proof vodka. Yes, because they're dry. There's no moisture in it. You can, at this time, get away with using the 80 proof. Now, if you're using fresh rose hips, you're going to have to use 100 proof because rose hips can be juicy. Now, another thing a lot of people don't know, rose hips is a food as well. You Many of people take the rose hips and also make um, a form of rose hip ketchup, rose hip jelly, all rose hip syrup. You can make an extract with it if you wanted to. Because let me tell you, it makes a wonderful extract as well. You can use it either or for tincture or extract or make enough to where you can do both. Let's talk a little bit more about the rose hips before we get busy. Extremely high. Nature's highest form of vitamin C right here. It comes, of course, later in the year when the rose hips get ripe. Um, extremely good for uh, colds, coughs, flus, anything chest-wise. Extremely medicinal for that. Inflammation. It's been studied extensively for arthritis use. Um, so much more information, and I'll have it in the description box below the video, like I always do. Always check the box, the description box below the video. There's always information in there. So, with that being said, let's make a tincture. Oh, I see what it is. Sorry, y'all. I keep seeing movement up there. Apparently, I'm not the only one that wants to get warm in the shed. There's a big old stink bug up there. I'll have to take care of that after a while, but not now. <coughs> now, of course, me being me. Oh, it smells so good. Oh, okay. Now these, let's see if you can see down in there. See how fine chop, fine chop they are? This is going to go a long way. You won't have to use as much. Because the alcohol is not going to have to work hard to extract this. Okay, that's three cups. Now, halfway mark is four. This is three cups. Now, if you don't want to make a big batch like I do, you can do a pint jar or quart jar. But, with it being chopped down, it's not harmed or anything. Nothing's wrong with it. It just means the alcohol is not going to have to work as hard to get into the rose hip to pull the nutrients and the benefits, medicinal benefits out of it. Oh no, I forgot to take the plastic top off this one. Wait, I might can do it this way. Yeah. Got it. Don't forget to recycle your bottles also. I don't need that.
Woohoo! And it made it. And I had extra waiting just to be on the safe side. Now, I pour and fill my, I, I fill my jar up to the rim because I do not want oxidation to happen because it can mess your tincture up. Because if you don't keep anything at the top under the alcohol, oxidation can happen. And there's always a chance of mold. And, well, you don't want to go to all this trouble to have your tincture mess up. Let me close up my rose hips. And you're going to want to gently agitate it and make sure that there's no air bubbles see how it's already changing the color already I just go to tell you this is going to be a very stout batch which is what you want to look forward to is a very good stout batch sharpie marker always now if you want to label it you can now i wouldn't put a label on the side because these jars are going to sweat because you want to store it in a cool dark place and well these bottles will sweat okay rose hip tincture and this is three 18.23. Now, with that done, eight weeks from this day, you count eight weeks from today, or the day that you make it, your tincture will be ready. <coughs> Excuse me a minute. Okay, at the eight-week mark or later, longer, it's ready. Um, I'm not going to give dosage amounts because it's kind of moot. Um, you can't take this right now. It's not ready. It's going to taste just like pure vodka. No. At the eight-week mark or when I get time to make the second video of straining this then i will give dosage amounts if you just cannot wait do your research find out what your dosage amounts are then like i said this can be used as a medicinal or it can be used as an extract or if you make a big enough batch you can have both simple easy massive massive amount of vitamin c in this jar just make sure that every day every other day you see i'm just gently agitating it don't shake it it's not going to do you no good all right i'll let that roll and calm down Yep, my alcohol is still right up there to the rim. What you want to make sure that it is. Now, understand with this being dry rose hips, some of your alcohol level may go down. That's fine, y'all. Just top it off with some more. That's why I always save uh, the bottles. And I will pour that down into a smaller bottle. Because, yeah, you don't want to leave that little bit of alcohol in a big bottle. Always uh, pour it down into, this will go into either a half jelly or a jelly jar to put back. Don't waste it, save it. And when your bottles are empty, guess what? Recycle them, please, y'all. If you can, recycle them. 
Simple, easy, anybody can do this. And I can already feel it starting to sweat some because it's cold. That alcohol was cold. The jar was fairly cold. No, the jar was kind of warm. Uh, but that alcohol's not, not warm. That alcohol's cold. Simple, easy, anyone can do this. And like I said, eight weeks from March 18th, it's going to be ready, and I once once I can it gets ready and I can get around to it, I will do a video showing you how to strain it and everything. Simple, easy. All you need is the rose hips, eighty proof vodka, a clean sanitized jar of some kind with a tight fitting lid. You don't want to use no cheesecloth, none of that stuff. It's got to be a tight sealing lid. That way, oxidation does not happen, because if you don't seal this over, it's going to mess your alcohol up. You won't have alcohol anymore. You can do this. You just got to believe in yourself. You can do anything, y'all. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. <clears throat> Excuse me. May you each be safe. Stay positive. You got this. Continue to stock your pantries. With food that will sustain you and feed you nutritionally. Continue to stock up your medicine cabinets or things for your pantry that you can cook with. Yeah. Wonderful flavoring. Can also be added to tea as well. Used medicinally or for flavoring. Either or. You can do this. You got this. Believe in yourself. I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Y'all take care and may you each be blessed. I'll see you soon.